Gamers, what is good? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and your day's about to get a whole lot better after you watch this advanced tech skill video for Genshin Impact. I'm talking things like animation canceling, energy funneling onto low energy characters, making your character invincible in certain situations. These techs aren't only like fun to perform, you're gonna be schmoving around the map, but it's just gonna improve your play and you're gonna be clapping the game's content that much quicker. Now, you may know some of these tips that I'm gonna be putting in this video, but I guarantee you're gonna learn something new in this video that you can implement into your gameplay to take you to the next level, I promise. So guys, let's get into it. Now, sometimes you might be watching some Genshin streams such as mine or another content creator, and it looks like they're pretty much invincible. That's because whenever your character dashes, like I'm about to do right now, I did not take any damage because of iframes. Every time you dash for a very short amount of time after the dash, you are immune to damage, okay? This is an iframe or an invincibility frame is what is happening. Now, the thing about iframes is that it needs stamina, okay? You know, obviously if you're out of stamina, you cannot dash, which means you cannot make yourself invincible. For characters like Ayaka and Mona with the sprints that go under the ground like this, the thing is, is when you come out of their sprint, you are like forced to do this little animation and you can get hit during that. So that's why these iframes usually feel more difficult or they feel a little bit more clunky on the characters like Ayaka and Mona. That's kind of why people complain about them, you know, as often as they do. That doesn't mean they can't dash to iframe. It just means that they have more lag and it's just honestly worse for iframing than the other dashes in the game. So dashing and iframing is gonna become something that should be second nature to you at all times playing Genshin. Like this is something that you are going to implement every single time you pick up the game, you're in the abyss, you're beating your weekly bosses, you're fighting some hill trails. You need to start dashing to be invincible to dodge attacks. You dodge attacks, you don't get hit. It's as simple as that. Now, another thing that makes you invincible is when you use your burst. That's such an important thing about using your burst is that it makes you invincible for the time being during your burst animation, right? Here, let me get enough energy on my uh, Zongli here to do it again. Now, I guess I have these shields, right? But if I was about to get hit, my burst will make me invincible. This is just another thing that you want to add into your gameplay. You're about to get hit, you use the burst. You're about to get hit again, you switch, you use the burst again. This is all going to become second nature. You guys are going to be pros at this, and it's kind of just a very core fundamental of playing Genshin Impact iframes. Now here's one trick you might not actually know about iframes. Your character can still get healed while they are in the iframe of their burst. So here, watch this. I am going to burst with Bennett and then to dodge an attack, I'm gonna switch to Zong Lee. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna switch and look at my HP at the bottom. During that animation, Zongli was still able to heal his health, but he's actually not able to lose his health from enemy attacks. So you can use that to your advantage. You've got someone at one HP, you've got the Bennett burst up, but they've got their burst up, immediately switch in, immediately burst. You might even come out of that burst animation with like half health or even full health if you're someone like Zongli. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is animation canceling. Characters, especially Claymore characters, can start to feel quite laggy when you play them so watch i'm gonna do deluke's full attack string and i'm just gonna move my control stick or you know the movement keys on the keyboard you're playing right look how long after the final hit it's gonna take for me to be able to move boom that took like a full second maybe even like a second and a half and i mean in high stakes situations playing against them, like that could you know be your death right so i'll attack over here and the second my last hit hits, I can jump, for example, that's a jump cancel, or I can attack, 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 and then right when it hits, I can dash cancel. Now, dash canceling is usually faster, and it also makes you invincible, like we just talked about, but the actual jump cancel, um, it's not gonna make you invincible, but it doesn't take stamina. The dash cancel takes stamina, the jump does not. So all these things can be used to your benefit to cancel animations. Now, certain characters in the game pretty much require animation canceling to feel not clunky and to pretty much take their damage to their maximum potential to output a ton of DPS. Characters like this are Ning Guang and Klee. I'm gonna show you guys an example right now of Ning Guang 
just attacking normally, and then I'm gonna put it side by side with a clip of me attack canceling each auto. Here they are. So as you guys can see, the Ningguang on the right is attacking way faster. This is just more DPS. You're getting out more auto attacks, so it is more damage, and it feels less clunky to play. You're not like stuck standing still as long. Now, how you do this specific auto attack cancel is pretty much you hold forward on the keyboard or the controller, however you're playing, and right when Ningguang starts to move forward after your single auto attack, you're gonna immediately immediately press the attack button again and she's going to interrupt her walk and attack again you're just like constantly just taking a little step forward attacking tiny step forward attacking tiny step forward attacking Yai Miko is actually a fantastic example of being able to jump cancel your charge attack. Her animation feels really long, but like once that wolf has been out for a little bit of a second, you can actually jump cancel and move around and you can see the charge attack still goes off. Just another way to cancel animations. My next piece of advice is some nerd terminology for you guys and it does tie into what we just learned about jump canceling and animation canceling. There are people out there who have made dedicated character guides for your favorite character. They found out how to do the most damage. They've done the work for us so i highly recommend checking out these guides but sometimes these guides use this kind of terminology that we might not be very familiar with and those are things like when you read n1c now n stands for normal attack and then the number is what attack in the string it is some characters have three attacks in their string some have five pretty much it means one normal attack and then n1c is the example we're going to use that's one normal attack into a charged attack let me throw it over there so this right here would be the N1, just the first attack of the charge attack string. And so we would press A, boom, that's N1, normal attack one, charge attack. And then there's examples for Kaching like N4C. It's a way to save energy since charge attack takes stamina and you still are going to get out a lot of DPS. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and then boom. What you do is on the fourth attack when Kaching goes into the air, instead of doing the final one, which like dashes you forward, you go one, two, three, four, and then charge attack. And there's also going to be terminology saying like N1CJ. N1CJ is to jump cancel, which you can do a lot better like that. And then there'll be things like N1CD, which is normal charge dash cancel. This is just terminology you're going to run into when you are reading guides, which I recommend. So just want to help you out so you don't get lost and confused. Great example of putting everything we just learned together is Hu Tao. Her highest DPS string is N1C, but then you can do N1CJ and just cancel the uh, like animation right so i normal attack charge and i'm jumping and i'm taking zero stamina my hutao is losing legitimately zero stamina that's because i'm c1 which makes the charge attack take no stamina but if you were c0 you, the charge attack would take stamina but then if you were to dash cancel you would lose even more stamina and you just start running out so you n1cj to cancel it you stand still you don't run around the map you don't dash across the map and you could serve stamina high dps and it's kind of fun now i want to give you guys a tip on energy management energy is unbelievably important in genshin it's how you used your burst which more burst is more damage and more invincibility frames like we just talked about so i kind of want to give you guys a breakdown of how it works now the on field character will gain 100% of the energy particles' value that come to them, the little energy that flies around, right? Then the characters in the back, the off-field characters, are only gonna get 60% of the energy value from those particles. Now, particles are the really small ones, I'll have a picture here, they give one energy, and then energy orbs are the bigger ones with an element on them, or sometimes there's, you know, ones without an element, but whatever, they give three. If a character gets an elemental particle or orb that shares the same element as them, for example, Hu Tao, picking up an elemental particle, she will get three times the value. So a particle will be three energy instead of one, or an orb will be nine energy instead of three, and then energy recharge further increases this. You've got 200% energy recharge, that's gonna be six energy from a particle, for example. But now there are characters that heavily rely on getting their burst up to do their damage, but they're pretty bad at generating energy. A great example of this is Noelle. Her elemental skill 
skill actually does not generate energy so she really does rely on her team to get her energy now just like we talked about the character in the front is going to get 60 percent of the energy so you can do what's called energy funneling this is a favonius warbo um goro who's going to generate a lot of energy right so watch i'm gonna do this attack and then all the particles flying in the air i switched to noel to make her the on-field character while the particles were still in the air so they flew into her and she got 100% of the energy instead of Goro taking that who didn't need it. This is energy funneling, it's a mechanic and a skill that you really need to learn to make these characters shine. Characters like Noelle, Eula that have really bad energy problems. And the really cool thing about Noel is she keeps her like burst, you know, up when she switches out, right? So even though I'm about to switch uh, to get more energy on her, watch this, Goro's gonna come in, attack, boom. I switched to Noel. Look how much more energy she has. She got about a quarter of the energy she needed. Now she's full from, you know, these guys dropping energy when they die and she still had her burst up managing things like this i think goro and noel is a great example is gonna really take your noel or eula or anything like that to the next level i'm just full screen for this one but guys monsters in genshin have different amounts of energy that they will drop for you at different like hp thresholds so when you're just like killing a bunch of treasure hoarders or hillatrills you're gonna notice that they're dropping a lot of energy and that's just totally normal that's just something in the game that they do but there are characters i mean excuse me there are monsters in the game that just drop way less energy than normal and these are the monsters like the rift wolves and rift hounds they drop like no energy at all it, it's really annoying so you're not crazy if you feel like you just have no energy against these guys and i'll include a chart down below in the description that shows how much energy each monster in the game drops and uh, you can look into it more if you want to learn more let's talk about snapshotting it's probably a term that you've heard thrown around in like a guide or a video or a stream or something but let me break down what it actually means it means that a character is going to keep the boost that it had at the exact moment it uses its burst even if it loses that boost during the duration or something like that let me show you a really easy example so this is shangling's burst with absolutely nothing i have no crit it's gonna do 105 1005 1005 stop tagging me bro 1005 1005 okay all right so now i've got my energy back it's the same shangling now watch this i am going to drop the bennett burst okay and i'm gonna kind of even wait for it to almost be over before i use shangling's burst okay so here we go shangling's burst it's going to do 2417 2417 look bennett's burst is gone i'm not even jungling on the field anymore 2417 2417 2417 okay I'm repeating myself a lot, but what you're seeing is that Bennett's burst was gone and Zhongling wasn't even on the field anymore, but her burst snapshotted from that exact moment that you started the burst from being in Bennett's burst. Okay. This is a really, really important tech that is how all these speed runners, these, you get these crazy clickbait thumbnails. It's all from like godlike snapshotting waiting for Kazuha to get the boost, Bennett, all this kind of stuff. Snapshotting is really important and now you know what it means. Keep in mind, not every single skill in the game uh, or burst snapshots. For example, Beto's does. So Beto could do that exact same thing, drop it on Bennett's burst and then switch out. But not every character does. Read some character guides, go find out some more about your character to know if they do snapshot. Now, after talking about swapping, buffing and snapshotting, this is a really, really important piece of advice that you need to know if an effect on a artifact set or a weapon does not specifically say it works while you are off field assume that it does not work because almost all of them do not this is a great example right here very important viridescent venerer for animal characters it's one of the best artifact sets in the game but read it increases swirl damage by 60 decreases opponents elemental res to the element infused in the swirl by 40 percent now let me show you something about this okay we're back with our golem test dummy here so look i'm gonna affect him with pyro and now i'm going to drop the swirl now look at the arrows on his body the down arrows that means he is being debuffed to pyro damage right now all right so this is big now watch this i'm gonna drop sucrose's burst now i'm gonna switch and affect him with pyro 
boom he's getting swirled by pyro but look there's no down arrows he's not getting debuffed to pyro damage his pyro res hasn't been lowered because sucrose was not on the field at the exact moment that the swirl occurred with pyro this is really unfortunate but now that you might have just learned this you're going to be able to increase your dps a ton because you just need to make sure that sucrose is on field for that moment and then switch her out they're shredded and let's start clapping i've got another big example right here now another huge example of this is favonius war bow weapons it says crits have a hundred percent chance at r5 uh to generate a small amount of elemental particles which will generate six energy for the character it can only occur once every six seconds it doesn't say off field so watch this here we go official's attacking and then all those white energy particles that just came uh over to official that was from the favonius war bow but now i'm gonna drop oz before i activate this oz is gonna start shooting but now those are normal electro particles, but this is like an 88% crit rate official. This Oz will not generate the Favonius Warbo uh, big energy particles for my Zhongli because Fischl is not the one on the field. But now if I switch to Fischl, there we go. There's the particles just from that one single attack. So this is like a really unfortunate thing. Once again, you need to make sure to get the most out of these things that you are on the field to get these i am really happy though like recording this video that all of these tips are kind of like working together they're flowing together and it i think that you're learning lots of new combinations just like we talked about with goro and the fav bow trying to get the crits to get the energy onto noel well now you need to know that you can generate the crits but you can't generate all that energy if you're not the one on the field at the moment you crit so that was my advanced tech guide for Genshin Impact. Guys, it would mean the world to me if you guys dropped a like on this video. Maybe you even comment down below what kind of guide you'd like to see me do next or any kind of Genshin video for that matter. And please sub to the YouTube channel to uh, support me for free and see that next video. And guys, I'd love it if you guys checked us out on Twitch. I'm streaming all the time over there, streaming Genshin and other fun stuff. Just trying to just trying to make it out here as the small uh, content creator, you know what I'm saying? But um, huge shout outs to our people over on patreon supporting the channel zick steven gomez vgc and poison tongue boy if you guys want to support me directly please check out the patreon as well but guys that's enough showing for me i hope this guy was helpful i appreciate you guys very very much and i'll see you guys with more genshin goodness in the future peace